Hello everybody, this is Swing Jam, and today I'll be doing the weekend review. So the first talk I'm going to be covering is ASAN. I really like the setup. We've seen a basing pattern down here. We had a rally basing pattern. And now this is the third basing pattern setup. We have a really nice tight consolidation. And it looks like we're about to, you know, break out of this rectangular box. You know, volume starting to pick up again. We had a very low volume candle right before the expansion move. And it was an inside candle. The moving average of the 20 SMA continues to hold. And we finally broke above the month to date uh, anchored view up. So I think this is a very good risk to reward trade setup here. Could have a stop of around 2 to 3% and look for anything for 10 to 30% gains. Uh, so the further support levels would be 112 and the take profit area would be the 150 and the 162. Next is ASYS. I like this one a lot because it's forming a very nice, uh, you, know, you could say it's a cup and handle pattern, but regardless, it's a nice kind of uh, flag pattern. We had a nice rally and we have a very tight consolidation. Staying in the upper, you know, 70% of this candle on uh, Friday, 10 2021 the, the reason why I like it the most, though, is because it has a very low float of only 8.3 million shares. That allows this stock to be able to move very quickly. Uh, the market movers don't need a lot of uh, capital or, you know, ownership in the stock to make it have drastic moves. If we go the monthly, it's very, very choppy and whipsawy. But if we could get above this 1544 level, there's a good chance we, you know, we rally straight towards the 1988 level. It also has an earnings report next week on, on, on the 17th, so it has a potential catalyst to break this level and see continued upside. Finally, it's in the semiconductor industry, which has had you know the, probably the best relative strength compared to all the major sectors uh, in 2021. Further support levels would be 1078 and 12.54, and really there's not that much resistance on the uh, monthly time frame, as you can see. These volume nodes are very uh, small until we hit that 1988 level. Next is BLDR. I'm pretty sure I covered this in the last video. We saw a really nice uh, pop-up, and we have a consolidation. A very, very tight range here. I'll really be looking for a breakout and hope that we get some nice continuation off this gap up. Really, the goal is we just see it kind of drift upwards towards the 85 level. That would be ideal. As you could see, though, I had a really nice cup and handle base, and we held all the moving averages, and we're seeing continuation. Ideally, we consolidate in this range until the 8 uh, SMA catches up to price, maybe even 20 SMA, and then we start the next expansion move. Further support would be found at this purple box at 5487. And like I said, the resistance is around that 8085 level. Next is DBA. I thought this was very important to cover due to the long term breakout we finally see of this trend line. You know, it broke the trend line back in May, but we've really just been consolidating and we finally broke above this key resistance level. Old support becomes new resistance and we finally got a weekly close above. The only thing I would say is that the weekly, uh, sorry, this is a monthly volume. The weekly volume's, in my opinion, a little low for this type of candle. I think it should have been close to the 8 to 10 million range, but it's still, in my opinion, enough to justify a breakout and continuation. This is the agricultural ETF. So I'd be uh, focusing on names within the sector to be uh, playing to outperform the ETF. A good example of that quickly is CF. It's a leader within the sector, and it's setting up pretty nicely on the daily time frame. Uh, further resistance levels for this ETF would be here at 2098 and 2196. If we do come back within the range, the support levels I'm watching are 1934 and 1843. Next, we have uh, DHI. Um, I'm a big fan of this one. I covered this in the last um, video as well. We had the nice uh, setup here where we saw a bunch of bull flags across the weekly time frame we have one two three four we usually get a little consolidation before the rally and we're kind of seeing something similar we are gapped up into this resistance supply zone and you know not very surprisingly we kind of consolidated within this zone i think we will see a breakout going into next week and we probably will test this the end of this box here near the 102-104 area. We are seeing that this sector, residential construction, also has a lot of relative strength. And if you look at XHB, which is a Spider Home Builders ETF, you could see that we're breaking the local resistance high here at 79.14. 
and we're holding the moving average very well. If we go to the monthly time frame, we're at fresh all new um, all time highs, and this was a very nice basing pattern, so it has a lot of room to continuously run. Next, we have DNN, Denison Mines. This stock has been covering a lot really since the uh, March, April area. We've had a long term consolidation, but we've finally been able to see some you know, higher highs and higher lows. Um, we did not get a retest of this 149 level, which is actually pretty good. And right now, I'm really just seeing if the sector can hold its area right here and continue to rally. If you look at URNM, we see a very similar thing nice cup and handle. It really needs to hold this base area. The 8 and 20 SMA should act as support, and we're ideally looking to rally to at least the 110 area. Now, the two best stocks in the sector are UEC and LEU. So if you can concentrate your capital into these two uh, stocks, I highly recommend that. But DNN is my uh, personal third favorite, and I do have a large uh, holding in this company. The next stock is DOYU. I really like this name. I uh, posted a chart on Thursday in the swings chat. I saw a penny stock trader also posted this going into the Friday session. The reason why I liked it a lot is because I'm seeing the sector as a whole has a, a lot of upside. Really nice basing pattern down here. And it had a nice gap and go in the Thursday session. So I think we'll see some nice continuation into the ER. I'm looking for a quick move into the supply zone before the 16th. Um, support would be uh, 388 and 321, while the resistance is 425. Longer term resistance would be seen over here near the 719 level. This lines up with the 200 SMA on the daily time frame and the year to date anchor view box. So I'm going to draw a box here. This is a very important long term uh, resistance area for DOYU. Next is EMPH. Uh, this is a solar company. I covered this in the last video. Saw some nice continuation in the past two weeks. I was hoping we get a better close on Friday, but I think this is going to be another case of an earnings post drift gap up. Essentially what that means, it had strong earnings and it just kind of drift upwards for the rest of the quarter. I think this is a very likely situation and we could see a lot of rotation coming into the solar uh, industry now. So I think we'll continue to see this trend, and I think TAN will at least test this 102.92 level. So port levels for ENPH is 22.95, and if we set a FIB from the range, we see that the first Fibonacci resistance is 262.66. Next is FCX. This is the you know, number one copper miner stock that you can hold from a market cap standpoint. Uh, and it's just the leader of the sector. This will usually outperform the spot price of copper. We did break out of this nice range, and now we're holding the uh, 61.8. So as long as this FIB can hold, I think we'll get continuation to the 44.81 level. If not, we will come back and retest this uh, support level at 39.50. And I think that opens up a pretty good buying opportunity, assuming we do not form a pivot pattern. Next is GDX. Um, I'm a big fan of this one. I've been covering a lot on the stock swings. I was talking about it down here where it could potentially form this inverse head and shoulders. It undercut my level slightly, but it did end up rallying, and now we're above the 200 SMA in the year-to-date anchored VWAP, and we're now we're holding this major FIB from the, um, the, the post-COVID rally high into the COVID low. So I think as long as GDX can hold this level, I'm going to remain bullish. Um, the major factors you're looking for is Dixie. So I'm going to quickly pull it up here. On uh, First, I guess I'll just cover uh, GLD SPY. Um, gold relative to SPY seems to be in a good area to bounce. So this is actually bullish for gold. We're in some uh, pretty good support level. This is when the uh, ETF was first created, and we can kind of get a first reference of this ratio. It is pretty um, undervalued or very weak towards the S&P. So if we rallied here, it would be a very logical place. Now going to DXY, this is just the um, U.S. dollar. And we're seeing that we saw a nice uh, inverse head and shoulders, and we finally broke the key resistance level at $94. We were about to enter the void area, which is really just an area where price can cut through very quickly. But we used that area as support instead, and we started to rally. It looks like a very bullish chart here for DXY, and it's not something I'd really be looking to short or be bearish on until we see this 94 level get broken. 
Next thing you're really looking at is TNX. Sorry, TNX, the 10-year Treasury yields. Um, there's really not much else here to look at besides that this is a potential head and shoulders. It looked like it failed, found support near the 200 SMA, and is rallying. So if this were the case, you would see a lot more rotation into small cap stocks and, in my opinion, regional banks. Regional banks are setting up very nicely. So as a hedge towards a precious metals long, uh, holding one or two banks in your portfolio is a good idea, in my opinion. Next is GD, GGD.TO, uh, Go Gold Resources. This is my favorite small cap gold miner just due to the immense relative strength it has um, compared to the rest of the gold miners. Um, we're at new all-time highs here. Very nice cup and handle setup. You could even say this is just a nice consolidation basing over the last consolidation. But as you can see, it had you know immense relative strength. And we had that COVID pullback. I mean, this stock was barely affected. So I think this is a very good long-term hold. And I think $4 is very much in sight if GVX can hold its current levels. Next is IWM. I think well, if we get a pullback into the 233 to 229 zone, I think it's a very good buy. And I think we rally to the 250 level. Something to note is that from the COVID high to the COVID low, we were very, very close to testing that 200 uh, FIB, and we started retreating. So now we're starting to see the moving average is starting to catch up back to price. And we formed a double inside candle setup. So on Monday or Tuesday by the latest, I'd expect a big expansion move. Again, the double inside candle setup is pretty much like a coil. You know, as it squeezes more and more, it gets tighter and tighter. And when it expands, it releases more energy. So that's basically what the two inside candle setup is. And I'd expect an expansion move by Tuesday. Sometimes Mondays are a little lighter trading days. So, you know, turnaround Tuesdays are usually the biggest moves occur on Tuesdays. And they usually are reversals. So I'd be uh, watching for that. Next is Joe. This is a the coffee uh, ETN. There's really no charting notes you really need to see besides the monthly. We're getting a really nice breakout on the weekly. Very strong candle. Volume is a bit low, but the, the candle is very strong. And if we go to the daily, we're breaking these local highs at 58.71. So again, this is another agricultural stock that you know somewhat related to DPA. And we're seeing breakouts across the entire board. So that's a very bullish sign, and I'd expect a lot of relative strength within the sector. Next is KL. This is Kirkland Gold, uh, one of my favorite gold miners, my favorite um, sort of mid to larger cap miner. As you could see, I was saying if we get into this area, it's going to be a very good buying opportunity. We held the anchored view up, and now we started to rally back to 45.51. Uh, I had a good close in the regular, uh, actually did not have a good close in the regular data, I thought it would close closer to 45, but uh, it did not do so. This is actually a pretty bearish candle. It did have more volume than Thursday. So we would really need to hold this 20 SMA here. It also is the old resistance of this range. So if we do not see a hold there, it definitely will fill the gap and probably come down to the 42.76 level. But this should uh, highly correlate to GDX holding this area here at 33.78. Uh, if we break through this 45.11 level, this first resistance at 47.34, the next area would be 49.30, and then uh, this uh, support and resistance level at 51.34. Next is KRE. Very briefly covered this, but there's really not much else to cover. Um, held up very well when TNX got uh, smashed through that, the head and shoulder setup. Very nice high and tight range. Um, I really like the setup. If we hold the 8 SMA, don't see why it would not rally to $80. Could even go further than that. Um, we finally broke above the March highs. So as long as we hold above that level, it's looking very, very bullish. Next is MGY. Nice XOP setup here. Um, this is not obviously XOP. This is a stock within the ETF. But very nice bull flag setup here. Ideally, we get a tap of the 50 SMA. That would open up to a very good entry. But see, this has a lot of relative strength, you know, over its, you know, 2019 highs, forming really constructive basing patterns. And it's a very easy stock to trade. It trends up very nicely. It's not that volatile, but it will give you good enough gains where, it's, you know, it's worth playing, you know, uh, not options, just, you know, the regular shares. So I'm highly interested in this one. To follow up, I will be looking at XOP SPY. 
This is just, you know, XOP despite on a relative basis here. And we're seeing that when we get into this resistance zone, we kind of start consolidating, but it's also forming a bull flag. So I think we will see a breakout of this bull flag. We'll enter this purple zone. This is a zone that really is a void. It's not that much resistance. Price should hypothetically be able to cut this zone very freely. As we see um, back in uh, 2020, you know, this area was cut very quickly. So I'm expecting a similar type of action to occur once we break the highs of uh, 25 cents. This white area would be the longer term target as it is a very big uh, resistance zone and this is a very good supply zone starting at 30 cents. The next area, uh, sorry, the next stock we're covering is MJ. Um, I like this one a lot. Uh, there's really also not that much notes we need to have on here. Um, it's really just breaking through the uh, key Fibonacci here at $15, which is also a very nice round number. I think we'll see continued momentum here as we had a nice uh, inside candle setup, held the key moving averages, and gapped right above the 50 SMA. So ideally, once we break 15.72, we're going to rally all the way to 18.52. Uh, the void here is big. There is some um, you know, high, you know, VAP levels here, but I still think we'll see some nice continuation, mainly due to it breaking these key resistance levels and the high volume coming in. Um, further support would be 1408, and again, resistance 1572, a more minor level here at 1715, and a much bigger level at 1852. Next is NUE, bull flag setup starting to break out and drift upwards. Moving averages are starting to curl in the upwards direction. Um, I think, again, like I said in the last video, this stock will need more time to consolidate before we see a bigger move. If we go back to the reference here, I think we're going to see a very similar setup to what we saw in the 0405 setup. So, again, another month or two of consolidation and then a rally to 160 plus is what I see in the time horizon for NUE. Next is SEDG. This is my second favorite solar stock. Had a nice gap up and now it's been having a more of a rectangular basing pattern instead of an ER post drift. As long as we hold the 20 SMA and ideally 344, we should be good. On a breakout of 376, I expect a clean rally to the 400 level. This stock has had a lot of time to base and you could even call this a nice cup and handle. So it has a lot of uh, technical motives to run to the 400 level. Further support would be 307, and uh, yeah, there's really no other resistance beyond uh, 376 to 400. Next is Steve Madden. I covered this in the last video. Really nice uh, base on top of this old resistance level. Old resistance becomes new support. Had a nice rally and is now uh, forming a, a bull flag here. As you see, once the flag forms, the volume drops, which is a pretty bullish sign. And the uh, month-to-date anchored view up is holding very well as support. So I think we will probably break out of this level and hit uh, 52. If we do see a close below 48.62, I would probably cut my position and take my uh, gains from this basic pattern. Next is silver. Very, very key level for silver here. The 200 SMA is very, very important. I covered this back in July. Once we saw this gap gap and go downwards, especially after we retested it and had a very, very sharp decline. You know, it really validated how important this level is. So I'm hoping, you know, Monday or Tuesday, we see a gap and go above the 200 SMA and kind of start changing the uh, the silver and gold narrative. As you could see, this too also formed a very nice uh, inverse head and shoulders. And if we zoom out to the weekly time frame, it held some pretty good um, support and resistance levels. Old resistance now becomes new support, which we found here in 1989. So, yeah, I think this is a very nice consolidation zone. This is really the first major consolidation of this basing pattern from 2016 to 2020. So, I think that allows silver to run to at least uh, the major resistance level here at 2796. The next one would be 3405. But my longer term target is this $50 level. I am uh, pretty confident we, we will hit this level within the next two years. Next is SLX. Really not much to cover here. We need to clear this anchored view up, which lines up with the 200 SMA and 5801. Again, I think we'll consolidate longer 
uh, below this resistance level. And this anchored view out from the COVID lows is becoming support again, as we see initially was support back in April and May of 2020. It's becoming support again during this consolidation. So I think we'll just kind of chop here for another month or two, and then we'll start breaking out. Once we start breaking 50 to 1, I think you'll see a lot more relative strength within the entire sector. Next is SMH. Really not much to cover here. A lot of ETFs are doing the same thing, especially the major spider ETFs. They're all just breaking out to new all-time highs. I understand this is not a major spider ETF, but semiconductors, in my opinion, are one of the most uh, important industry ETF charts we could be looking at. And as you could see, we broke through this uh, resistance level of 276, and we're holding the 8 SMA very well. So as long as if we go the 65-minute, uh, really this level here, 292, continues to hold, I think this is a pretty sure thing to retest 310 within the next uh, two weeks. Next is SPY. You know, I could see SPY going all the way down to 459. That's a 200 range from the COVID high to the COVID low, or even lower to this kind of 422, 442 area. Sorry. But it just doesn't make sense to short it right now. You're going to see so many, I mean, I'll cover it later in the video, but so many uh, spider ETF charts are breaking out to new all time highs. So I'm not really trying to short something that's breaking out to new relative strength. So what I would be doing is if you do want to short uh, the SPY or the QQQ, I'll wait till you get a double top setup. So a retest of 469 or we get some sort of lower high setup. That'll be a lot uh, safer and a lot better risk to reward for a short. Could have some nice option put opportunities and, you know, make some quick gains if we get a nice uh, fall to the 20 SMA, which lines up with this area very well. If we do break this purple resistance level, uh, my target would be 475, which is very, very close to the 172 extension from the September uh, high to low. Next is 10. Briefly covered this. 9191 needs to hold. 102.92 is the resistance. The next level above that is 123. I am pretty bullish on the sector, and I see continued relative strength. Next is TME, Tencent Music Entertainment. Uh, had a nice you know, kind of breakout of this range here. And we had decent follow through going uh, into the weekend here. Really, once we break uh, 950, I think we'll run to probably the 1098 level. So that's kind of the move I'm targeting here. This also could be considered an inverse head and shoulders. And the moving averages are starting to curl upwards. So it has a lot going for it. Next is uh, VUZI, uh, broke out of this nice consolidation range. I think we'll have an easy test of this uh, 200 SMA in this resistance zone. It had a lot of volume going into the weekend, so I think we'll see a nice gap and go situation here for VUZI. Next is XLB. I was, I've been covering this uh, ETF a lot. It's been one of my favorite ETFs to kind of cover and play. Really due to the relative strength, I'm seeing a lot of the individual uh, industries within the ETF, especially chemicals. Chemicals, in my opinion, are the leading ET, uh, leading industry in this ETF, and it's what's producing a large majority of the gains. Uh, this resistance level was the key one to look out for. We broke it, we back tested the level, and we rallied. We hit the 90 level, which is my short-term target. From here, I'll be kind of looking at uh, longer-term FIB levels, which they don't even show up uh, on the chart. I think the 94.32 is the next FIB, major FIB. So I'll be looking out for that. Additional support would be, again, a back test of 86.69 or a retest of 82.93. Next is XLI. Looking very similar here. Nice bull flag setup. We had we hit a resistance. I thought we might come into the support zone, but we didn't end up uh, getting that deep. We had a nice little consolidation here. Now we had a gap and go. The month of the anchored view op is now curving upwards and holding as support which also lines up with the, you know, the old all-time highs. So as long as we can hold this area, I think a rally to 108 to the 110 area would be very likely. So again, if you look at the weekly, this is not a chart I really want to be shorting, and it's a very, very nice bull flag setup. And that's it for the uh, weekend review. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys have a great trading week.